World Tree Productions presents the Plus One Eco Odyssey Finals with Sid, Jaya, and Kezia, who are competing to win a $50,000 prize and a 12-month mentorship to scale their business. Hi, I'm Shaylin from the Plus One Eco Odyssey. Welcome to Arizona. In last week's episode, Sid, Jaya, and Kezia participated in the Dig Deep Navajo Water Challenge. Jaya raised the most money for this charity and was safe. So today we find out Sid and Kezia's fate. Who did the judges think performed better in the challenge? Good luck, contestants. Okay, so it's obvious that two out of the three of you had the same theme about a cocktail hour on a Friday night. So instead of going to the bar, donate. How did that come about besides sort of the obvious? Sure. So to be completely honest with you, Jay and I actually just spoke about it since we were reaching out to different audiences. I, at least for me, I definitely, I think the goal was to raise money for the charity. So I did not think about as much about, okay, the competition. We, I mean, it, it was about, I think this messaging strategy raises the most and that's what's important. For all it's worth, I did actually cover a little about the actual project which was shared with us and on my social media post, I put up a bit of writing and a post from uh, the website of, uh, of Dig Deep. This is water for people. I think you guys would, would have had a little bit more um, um, passion towards it. Everything you do from this moment on need to support your commercial endeavor. Thanks for the feedback. Um, I do agree. I did, I did find the challenge challenging. This was an incredibly difficult challenge for me. I felt uncomfortable asking my community in South Africa to donate funds to a worthy cause in Navajo when there are such urgent issues much closer to home like the water crisis in Africa. I raised these concerns with the judges and the producers and they were incredibly understanding. They suggested that I offer my community the option to donate to an organization that provides clean water and sanitation to the millions who suffer with these issues in Africa. And that's what I did. Kizzy, you bring up two things that are really, really important. And I really value that you bring them up. Water is always a local issue. And it is almost impossible to get people to connect with water-related issues on the other side of the world. Absolutely get it, and I, I really value that perspective. I think you have the best tagline, by the way. Give water, give life. Like, that's the heart of it. A million thanks for your perspective and, and really calling that out. There wasn't a lot of sense of urgency on actually nobody's posters that say by 5 p.m. tonight. So there wasn't a a sense of how much time you were giving people and the urgency. So I was curious, what was going through your heads with the time management thing? When we started the challenge, uh, like I kind of thought of this strategically, but I felt my best chances of raising money was to actually call people up. Um, and then the rest of the, the remaining two or three hours, I was just trying to call everyone I could. I think for call to action, like calling people up, um, just with my sales, I don't know, I feel like that's the right way to do it. So for me, that's just how I split my time. And the contestants going to the final are Jaya from Fiber.bio and Kezia from Shark Safe Barrier. Way to go, ladies, and best of luck to you both. Congratulations. We can't wait to see who wins the grand prize of $50,000 and a 12-month mentorship to scale their business. <laughs> Oh, we're sorry to see Sid go. He was a fan favorite and we wish him the best of luck with his business, Clearbot. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you. You do good work, man. Thank you. Thank Keep you. Up. We've really enjoyed getting to know all of the contestants who hail from seven different countries and represent the best and brightest ego entrepreneurs of their generation. Their innovations solve big water problems that can help save the planet.
Who will win the Plus One Eco Odyssey? Today marks the final journey for our contestants. Kezia and Jaya have reached the finals, and one will go home with a $50,000 prize and a 12-month mentorship to scale their business. For Jaya, this means building out manufacturing for Fiber.Bio. For Kezia, this means SharkSafe Barrier can expand to new markets. Now is the moment you've all been waiting for. In today's challenge, each contestant will have five minutes to pitch their investment in their company. Following the pitch, there will be a 10-minute Q&A with the judges. Good luck, contestants! Jaya, you are in the lead, so you go first. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaya Varshney, and I am one of the co-founders at Fiber.Bio. The textile industry is the world's second largest polluter. 90% of this pollution is derived at the material level of production. The fibers that are most polluting are petroleum-derived fibers, such as spandex, polyester, and nylon. 60% of the global apparel market uses petroleum-derived fibers, and that is a trillion-dollar market. I want you to feel your clothing right now, and if you feel that there's a little bit of stretch in your clothing, that means there's likely a petroleum-derived fiber in your garment. The issue is every time you wash this garment, there is microplastics that are being released through the washing machine that are entering our waterways. These microplastics are entering our waterways, they're being eaten by our wildlife, and therefore are being eaten by us. These microplastics last up to hundreds of years in our bodies, which means this is no longer just an environmental issue, this is a health issue. It is estimated that over 80% of all water reserves have been tested for microplastics. We at Fiber.Bio have created the world's first and only bio-derived fiber that can replace spandex, polyester, and nylon. We do this by converting organic bio waste, such as crustacean shells, seaweed, orange peels, insects, into fully compostable, stretchy fibers. Our proprietary novel bacteria is what allows this process. Our bacteria has some of the highest yields, the fastest fermentation, it uses zero toxic chemicals, it's net zero waste and net zero carbon. We know that there is a huge demand for this product based on the conversations we've had with potential customers. When looking at the other competitors that are making innovative materials, they might be sustainable, but they're not economically viable, nor are they stretchy. AKA, they are innovating to make replacements for cotton, silk, and leather, not stretchy fibers. We have put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of resources into this innovation. We are very confident in its ability to solve a global problem. However, we are in the early stages of development, and so we are not revenue generating, which is why potentially winning this $50,000 could make all the difference in the world in our ability to achieve and attack this global issue. Alongside, obviously, your mentorship would also be very valuable. I've also really appreciated just the organization of this show and to be able to highlight entrepreneurship and put light on climate change issues. I, I just want to make it very clear that this $50,000 would go a long way in supporting our development and our innovation and our dedication to solving this problem. Thank you. You've, right now you have a fiber and you're hoping to turn that into a fabric. What's that process looks like? How, to, how much time do you need? Thank you for the questions. So we're estimating at this point to be revenue generating by Q1 or Q2 of next year. Right now we have the fiber and right now what we need this money for is to be able to turn it into a fabric. Um, assuming we have our patent already secured and we have the money that we need, we know all the steps that we need to take. We have the team um, of experts who, who know what they're doing when it comes to taking that fiber and spinning it and turning it into the fabric. So we have the skills, the talent, the expertise. It's just about securing our patent and getting the money secured. So the longevity, like do you have any uh, idea how durable the fabric would be? What we do know is that we can spin this fiber with other natural fibers, which would also um, allow for different longevity testing. There's obviously a huge market when it comes to performance apparel, but I think there is potential to look in things that have shorter lifespan, like undergarments and socks. We definitely know that there is 
a huge range of products that this would work for. Jaya, thank you. I'm very interested in hearing about your growth strategy and your growth goals. Where do you see yourself and your company in three to five years? One of the things that we are looking at is a micro factory model where we're able to open a micro factory all around the world depending on where that waste product we are able to source. And with this model, we would eliminate lots of transportation, therefore lots of carbon emissions, and we'd be able to convert local problematic bio waste, um, provide local jobs, and convert that into a product for where it's demanded. What are your biggest challenges to reaching that goal? Right now, our biggest challenge is capital. There's a huge educational component to what we're doing. I want to make sure that in providing this product that I believe to be very sustainable, how do I do so in a way that's providing enough information to explain to our customers why it's sustainable and not just saying that it is. My question is, why and when did you think about this idea? I've always been someone that is very impact driven and I started an environmental awareness campaign when I was young all about eliminating single-use plastic. Through that process I thought a lot about how can I be the best consumer and the thing that I was probably consuming the most was clothing and so I spent a lot of time researching into brands, their certification, their claims, um, just to try to make sure that I was very aligned and values aligned with the items that I was buying and I tried to thrift the majority of the clothes that I was, I was purchasing. From there I realized that like that was only going to do so much as an individual consumer and so that was what transitioned me into impact investing, realizing I can do more with my dollar from a financial lens than from a consumer lens. It was through my professor who connected me with our scientist that I was able to get involved with Fiber.Bio and that was the start of this journey. And I'm very excited to be on it because I really, really believe in the product and what we're trying to do. That was a great pitch, very personal which leads me to my first question. I really value the team. Yeah, IP is great, go to market strategy is great, but whether you are successful or not depends upon you and your team. So tell me more about the team. We are a small team of three with two advisors and we like to say that we are the perfect blend between business and science. Our scientists are very dedicated to their work and looking as into nature as a source of inspiration for all of the things that have been achieved to date. One of our advisors is one of the first employees at Lululemon and so has a vast experience when it comes to performance apparel. Our other director is um, an MIT and Harvard grad and a profound professor at UBC in the science department. We have a team that come together because of this passion towards solving this problem. Yeah, I'm very proud of what has been achieved together and I'm very confident in our ability to to do what's needed to take it to market. I want to know about your IP, where you are, because the status quo does not like to be disrupted and you have the potential to break a lot of people. Our patent is currently pending and so that has slowed down a lot of the conversations because we are very cautious about sharing too much with potential customers or investors, um, granted just the delicate nature of our IP. I want to know how you would explain to somebody who doesn't believe there's a water crisis or doesn't understand the water crisis, how would you explain that to them in a way that helps them understood what is going on and why there's such a need to make changes? When people can't see the effects of climate change, I think it makes it harder for them to care. And I think more recently we're seeing more and more examples of events in nature that shouldn't be happening. And so it's making people realize that like this is real and if that's still not resonating with them then there's the financial aspect because being more sustainable is going to be financially the better option. Learning to bridge those two worlds in conversations with people has been very valuable in trying to get them to understand the effects of climate change. Good morning everybody, my name's Keys here and I'm here to convince you to invest in Shark Safe Barrier. So the shark human conflict leads to negative consequences and these consequences can manifest in three primary ways. Human safety concerns, loss of tourism revenue and environmental impacts if not handled correctly. Sharks are an important attraction in coastal regions, however the fear associated with them and incidences that occur can result in a loss of tourism revenue for local businesses and communities. An example is in Reunion. 
Reunion saw a 40% de decline in tourism related bookings after a single shark incident, beaches were closed and surf events were cancelled. They also lost a 20 million euros a year in tourism revenue as a result of increase in shark occurrences. The most common way in which the shark-human conflict is addressed is by means of shark culls through fishing gear such as gill nets and drum lines. This not only affects shark species, but a variety of other marine life that get caught in the nets and die. If we look at Australia, there have been reports that in one year, 90% of the marine life caught in these nets were not actually target species. And if we look in South Africa, the majority of the shark species caught in the South African nets are threatened and endangered shark species. Sharks are a critical component of marine ecosystems. They balance marine ecosystems, they regulate prey populations, and they maintain biodiversity. The Shark Safe Barrier combines two shark-specific technology ideas to deter sharks. First is the visual appearance of a kelp forest, and the second is, is magnets embedded within the barrier, which sharks are particularly sensitive to due to the sensory organ that they have called the ampullae of Lorenzini. So some other advantages of the shark safe barrier, the first eco-friendly, shark specific, scientifically tested barrier that there is on the market to protect and to separate humans and sharks. The other benefits of the shark safe barrier that it's easily maintained, it can be monitored from the shoreline, boats can move through it, and it is active 24 seven, and it requires no power source. Our market includes the hospitality industry, as well as municipalities and governments that are unhappy with current mitigation measures used for the shark-human conflict, and then the tourism sector who are concerned about their client safety. The total addressable market in this regard is up to 500 installations because that's how many nests exist today. If we look at the tourism sector, you can add hundreds of potential installations. So we need your help to make leverage of this addressable market, to increase our brand awareness, to get rid of lethal measures that are currently being used in our oceans uh, and replace it with the environmentally friendly shark safe barrier. We need you on our team. Thank you. Go sharks. Kezia, thanks. I'm still traumatized by the movie Jaws, but you've gotten me a little bit more comfortable with the whole notion of uh, sharks. Uh, have you thought about flipping the value proposition around a little bit? A more positive value proposition as opposed to a shark barrier. I'm not going in the water ever again. <laughs> I, love, I love the idea of shifting the narrative about the product. Because there's such an inherent fear in society, it might be beneficial to, to look at it in a different light. But I don't want to lose our key value, the shark protection, in a more environmentally friendly way. How big is the market and how fast can you get into the market? So based on landing our first commercial installation last year, there's considerable growth that we foresee, potentially three installations this year. Next year, five to 10 installations. So we do, we do see a 40 to 70% increase per year going forward from this first commercial installation because we believe that this has allowed us to get the foot in the door. I am from an indigenous tribe here in the United States and my interest in any pitch has to do with the indigenous communities of the countries that you come from. I don't see any way that I'm connected to what your what your product is and so what I want to know is what is your indigenous tribes in your country and what is their connection to what you're trying to accomplish? In South Africa specifically, um, the, the idea of installing barriers in South Africa provides a safe environment for everyone, inclusive indigenous people, who, whoever. We, we've had requests to install in very affluent communities that that don't support local people and our, our response was no we want to we want the beaches that this is installed on has access for everyone so that is very important to us i think the biggest thing that comes comes to mind is the coexistence we want to create a coexistence between nature and humans that thrives and i think that talks to you know indigenous communities all over the world easy i love the socks came dressed appropriately <laughs>
Uh, I want to know what uh, has been the hardest thing about raising funds so far. Funding for ocean-based projects is definitely increasing, but it's still limited in comparison to other innovative technologies. With doing research and development in the water, you require a lot more time. You require a lot more funding. Um, so these funding opportunities are often not tailored towards those sort of things and often don't meet the requirements of what we need financially or time frame wise and that, that has been our biggest challenge. It's definitely shifting, um, which is great for us, but it has been a long frustrating road to see the shift. What's the difference between the cost of what you are offering versus the status quo? It's been very difficult to get a price specific on the alternatives that exist. So you, got, you have the shark nets which are lethal, you have echo barriers that exclude all marine life from a specific area and that are not particularly robust in, in environments. They break often. There's lots of maintenance costs involved. There's a lot of labour involved in these maintenance costs. These nets have to be deployed often by boats. It takes manpower, it takes petrol. So what I'm trying to get at, our shark safe barrier is more expensive to install but it is 20 times cheaper to maintain in the long run than it would be to the alternatives. The barrier has an excessive lifespan. It can last for up to 20 years. The other solutions out there often need to be replaced every year or every other year. So there's a lot of turnaround in that. And I was wondering if you have ever thought about this as an adaptation solution to climate change. A lot of the coastal communities are dealing with sea level rise, frequent floodings or uh, storms. So do you think this can be an additional opportunity for you, especially since you're talking about 500 installation, this may take you to a totally different market? It is definitely something I'm going to take home with me from this challenge and to really explore um, because, like you say, you know, it can take our addressable market from 500 to 10,000, who knows? So um, I really appreciate you both bringing that to light and really honing in on that, so thank you. For release. <laughs> oh, wait, let's oh, yeah, talking. Okay. <laughs> thank Great you job. very much. So, so nice. lovely to meet you guys. You too, you thank Great you. Job. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. Judges, we're at the final. You've heard two investment pitches by Jaya and Kizia. Let's review Jaya's performance first. Nusha? Jaya is quite passionate. The topic she's picked can potentially revolutionize the market. It is a very, very important issue. So I think it has a huge potential. This is still at fiber level. We haven't made a fabric. And um, there is a step to be sort of taken before they can really figure out how this is going to work, how durable it is, how, um, uh, how they can sort of take it from lab to actual production and uh, sales. So um, she's a big step ahead of her. Her presence has struck me from the beginning. All the challenges that we watched, she talked about the desire to do this from a very early age and I just she stuck with it I think that's really commendable there seems to be a lot of competition in this space from a a difficulty standpoint maybe if she gets in front of the right people gets the right funding uh, and keeps pushing forward I absolutely think this will revolutionize the market and Rochelle what are your comments on Jaya I, I really enjoyed um, Jaya's presentation and the product that she wants to work with and to bring to the world. Everybody is some way doing something athletic and that's where our stretchy clothing comes in. And as our Navajo Nation, we're known for res ball, which is basketball on the reservation. <laughs> and we have t-shirts, we have jerseys, we have shorts. And to have the information that she gave about how it's affecting our earth and how it's affecting us as human beings. So I'm excited to revamp a, a Navajo Nation's um, team sports outfits to be more user friendly. She clearly articulates to the lay person what the issues are and the challenges she's really trying to solve. I do believe she has two big challenges which can be overcome. One is the installed base. So I believe her competition is really the status quo. So how do you how do you change that and move away from 
uh, everything that we currently use. And the second is the team. So who has she surrounded herself with? And making sure that she has the right people that complement her stage presence, passion, and drive to get over some of the challenges uh, around execution, but uh, very excited with what she's doing. Kizia is really offering something super exciting. I think she's not thinking big enough though. I think there is a lot more to be accomplished by what she's offering. And I think she, she can do a lot more with it beyond just saving sharks. So it can bring other investors to the table, which might not be as excited about sharks, but might be very interested in adaptation strategies for floodings and um, and storms or dealing with the loss of kelp forest and, and other uh, species. I've been impressed with Kizia throughout the entire competition. She has such a personality that comes through in everything she does. I mean, look at her with the shark costume coming in for the plot twist. I think that just shows who Kezia is. I don't think she's thinking big enough. I think she can keep her mission what it is and should maybe pivot with how she's communicating that to the individuals she's trying to get funding from. That could be just a, a tipping point for her and her business. So I'm excited to see where she goes. Uh, for Kezia, I enjoy how she's very passionate about what she is wanting to accomplish. I wish she would pull in more people to be as passionate about it along with her. I've tried to ask her questions as how her um, indigenous communities within her um, area of the world ties into what she's trying to do. I know there's a story that is connected between the indigenous tribes of her continent and the sharks and the sea. I wish she would connect it. I wish she would research it. She needs to open that audience a lot bigger to, to bring more funds and more um, uh, concern for the issue that she's working towards. Let's hear from Will. If this just becomes a niche product, I worry that it's really not going to scale. If this is reframed as a solution to the loss of biodiversity, she has a bigger shot and the ability to engage with a broader group of stakeholders. And I would also flip it around. She has an opportunity to better connect humanity to nature and understand that we're part of nature as opposed to a barrier. And if we can crack through that, so to speak, I think she could do something that's really transformative. So comparing the two, I'm, I'm torn. Um, they've kind of both edged past one another at different points of the competition for me. I've loved them both from the beginning. If I am to think about who has the most potential given the total addressable market, I think Jay is slightly ahead in my mind. Um, I'm, I'm the same. I see both of these young women and all of the contestants that we've met. They're not short of what they want to do on this earth for Mother Earth, Jaya. She's tackling an issue that covers the entire world. So if, if my decision were anything right now, I would say I am in favor of Jaya. I 100% agree. I think that it's a very large market. It's a very important issue. I appreciate how this is sort of touches both on land and ocean because pollution kind of goes throughout everything and just touches every ecosystem. It's a very large problem, needs a solution. It can really revolutionize things. Kizia really have a solution to a broad set of problems that we are having on the ocean side. And I think she's sort of offering that, even though she's not realizing it. In the beginning, I, I didn't really appreciate what Kizia was doing and see an absolutely enormous upside there. Having said that, I believe that you know, Jaya's solution that she's trying to develop could have the biggest impact uh, and truly be disruptive in the marketplace. Uh, but it's going to take a lot and it's going to take more people than the team that she has now and probably different people going forward. I would invest in both just to be 100%. bold and like my money invest in both as long as people like all of you were involved. Well, I think without you realizing it, you just made a call to action to our audience. Get on board with both of these individuals, follow them, support them. 
help change the environment. Finalists, we've come to the end of our journey. We must choose one winner. You've both been incredible contestants. Judges, we'd like to know how Jaya and Kizia have performed. Jaya, Kizia, I really appreciate you getting to know you, getting to know what you're working on. Um, I appreciate, Jaya, what you are trying to do. It has been a passion of mine. This issue has been very close to my heart, and I am I'm glad somebody as bright, as amazing as you is on it. Uh, Kizia, I really didn't know much about your space and I learned so much and it made me realize that you know what you're doing has so many different benefits that can be harnessed so I'm really excited to see how far you have come. I will echo Nusha's comments about both of you. Your passion from the get-go was clear on all the videos we saw of you. I've seen you here this week been no different. Uh, I'm an athlete myself, I think you, you know that, so I'm very excited about your products that hit the market one day. And Kezia, you have such a presence on all the videos, every conversation we've had. I have no doubts you are both, you're both gonna go very far. I'm excited to see how the shark barrier will, will work um, and I can't wait to see what it does for, for our oceans. Kezia. As I mentioned before, I don't live near an ocean and I appreciate how much you are putting forth into protecting the environment in that realm of our world. It doesn't take just one person to do that. And I appreciate everybody that's helping you and that you have um, come in contact with. And for both of you, I would just like to say, always keep an open mind. Use every outlet that you can possibly use to get your message out there. Jaya, um, as I mentioned before, I totally appreciate what you're doing. When we think about eco-friendly, when we don't really think about our clothing, because you know there's cotton, there's all these different ways that we um, produce our clothing, and the way you are approaching this is such a wonderful thing for our younger generation to be thinking about. And so I appreciate that about both of, um, both of you is your passion. Your passion is amazing, and I just want to say. Keep it up. Don't ever let it die down. Surround yourself with individuals that will help you boost that up every single day of your lives. I have, you know, no doubt you will change the world. You have already with with us, certainly in terms of opening up our minds, in terms of uh, stretchy frat fabrics and sharks. I mean, I never would have thought uh, I would learn so much. So, yeah, good people doing good things. Contestants, please turn around. <laughs> Aww. Contestants, please turn back around and we will announce the winner. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Again, thank you to both of you. You've done a wonderful job and to the rest of the contestants that uh, participated in the Plus One Eco Odyssey Challenge. It is my pleasure and my honor to announce the winner today, and the winner is Jaya. Woo! Oh. Yay! So Jaya, <laughs> to complete the outfit, here we go. Thank you. It looks like a princess. The blanket that um, we put on you is, it comes from my Navajo Nation tribe, a young lady named Naomi Glasses. Um, weaves Navajo rugs made out of wool and this company um, clothing anything they have. And this particular blanket is um, a legacy of water. And oh, in Navajo, wow. we say water. Wow, congratulations, Jaya. <laughs> You've won the $50,000 prize and 12 month mentorship to scale fiber.bio to material level production. You have proven you have the determination and focus to be a successful entrepreneur, and we look forward to seeing your journey.
This is uh, part of our tradition as well, the Navajo basket dance. Uh, I believe you guys chose a winner. Come over here. Come over here. This is right here. These are holy pictures. Each one of these dancers represents a direction. As Navajo people, we're very great to be here in your presence. And it's our honor to be here performing for you. As we do the basket dance here, it's our blessing from each of the directions. Everything is sacred to us. And so as we do the basket dance, we're asking for blessings. So I hope you guys enjoy. One more round of applause for our winner here. Woo It's amazing that we have individuals that are thinking about the future. We have seven generations that we have to think of that are coming after us. And each one of these individuals have done a wonderful job carrying on probably what their ancestors and their elders have talked about for generations. That was wonderful to see. I am so excited to see this group of people all young, all passionate, all environmentally savvy and driven. Gives me hope. For me, this has been an extraordinary journey. I've learned a lot. I found that everyone consistently is inspiring. It strikes me that they're good humans, really trying to solve big problems, and they're pretty fearless. They have a really good shot at succeeding. I have been awestruck by all of them. I loved every one of their solutions, and I can't wait to see where they take it. If our world is in their hands, I think we're in a good place. Hosting this show was a unique experience. The eco-innovations these amazing entrepreneurs have developed makes me hopeful that our generation will be the ones to live responsibly and sustainably on Mother Earth, as our elders and wise ones have counseled for future generations. It was really inspiring and empowering to know that what I and the other semifinalists were working on is being recognized. Um, it was truly a really memorable experience for me and I would definitely recommend it to anybody else in the future. Um, at the end of the day, learned a lot, made lifelong friends, and I think that's the best part of it all. For me, this was an amazing experience. Uh, I think meeting other participants made me actually feel kind of re-energized about what we do as well, right? And, and you realize that a lot of the work we're doing is interconnected um, and you feel like you're part of something bigger. I'm looking forward to getting back, getting on it and, um, and yeah, and then building something bigger. The experience was incredible. You learn a lot. I think you will grow a lot. And I think that um, you'll have relationships with people going forward. You know, with the judges' sort of experience and knowledge, they highlighted some key elements that we could look into that we could really leverage as a business. And I'm really looking forward to looking into that and exploring that further and seeing where, you know, where that can take us and, and maybe take us to the next level. So I'm excited about that. So much of the value of this experience has come from meeting the other contestants and I've appreciated that so much and just getting to know their stories and learning from their experiences too has been so valuable. It was an honor to be competing against all of them. Now that I've won the $50,000, I'm very excited to get back to the team and get our product further along in its development. This is just gonna make things so much easier and I can't wait to get started. Want to be a part of season two? Apply starting November 1st on the Plus One Eco Odyssey website. We're looking for eco entrepreneurs who are 18 to 35 years old and have a brilliant climate solution. <laughs>